NASA will test five habitat designs for its Lunar Gateway Space Station. NASA's Lunar Gateway Space Station design process is beginning to take shape. The agency has announced five new prototypes that it plans to test on the ground. These habitats aren't actually designed to use at the moon, but are more for NASA to learn about the interfaces, requirements and design standards for a future habitat module for U.S. astronauts, the agency said. Gateway would provide an orbiting base around the moon from which astronauts could descend to the lunar surface or go farther into space. These tests were formulated so that we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of very different and innovative concepts from U.S. industry, Marshall Smith who leads human lunar exploration programs at NASA headquarters in Washington, said in a NASA statement. While we won't dictate a specific design when we procure U.S. habitat, we will enter the procurement phase with far less risk because of the knowledge we gain from these tests. This news comes just weeks after NASA announced that. Following a directive from the Trump administration, it would aim to land astronauts on the moon by 2024. NASA is planning the gateway to be ready in the 2020s for human habitation. Scroll through the five companies' concepts below, plus a concept study from the company NanoRacks. says go to the moon, and he says go sustainably, in other words, this time when you go you need to stay, when the president says that, what does it mean? It means we need reusability. We have seen what happens in low Earth orbit when we reuse rockets, the costs go down and the access goes up. We need reusability in the entire architecture between the Earth and the moon. Reusable launch, reusable tugs, reusable command and service modules in orbit around the moon, reusable landers. Robots, rovers, uh, all going, uh, human landers going to the surface of the moon. Everything needs to be reusable built into the architecture. And that's really what Space Policy Directive 1 is all about, a sustainable return to the moon. But I have heard criticism that maybe when we talk about sustainable and reusable, why do we build SLS and Orion? I want to be clear, Orion by EM4 is going to have a lot of its components reusable, and we're working hard with our partners over at Lockheed Martin to make sure that we're building as much reusability into those vehicles as possible, and by EM4 it's possible. I'm, I'm not going to put a probability on it, but we could actually be reusing the pressure vessel of Orion in the near future. That's going to help us build reusability and sustainability into the, into the project. When it comes to SLS, and on this point I want to be crystal clear, SLS is not reusable. But it is a critical piece of the architecture that enables, us to, that enables us to deliver reusability to the moon. We're talking about launching Gateway and Orion and the European Service Module. All of these things are part of a reusable architecture. We're talking about a rocket that's bigger than any rocket that's ever been built in human history with a, with a payload fairing capable of carrying volumes that we've never seen before, taller than the Statue of Liberty to take our, not just astronauts to the moon, but at the same time, co-manifested payloads at the same time. This is a transformational strategic capability for the United States of America. And I want to stop for just a second and let you know this. SLS and Orion and Gateway and in low Earth orbit, the International Space Station, commercial crew, commercial resupply, and commercialization of low Earth orbit